<coughs> so earlier people the sahaba radiyallahu anhum they all used to do wudu and there was no tam uh, the revelation didn't come for tam so what happened one time rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was traveling on a journey with some of his sahaba radiyallahu anhum and uh, his wife was traveling with him uh, and it was the turn of aisha radiyallahu anha and so what happened when they were traveling and they stopped at one place and Aisha radiyallahu anha our mother she found that her bracelet or necklace it was missing okay so she told rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam about it so our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent some people to uh, find it the last uh, necklace or the bracelet so what happened was because of that they got delayed they were supposed to go and move and they ha- they were delayed because of the searching and at that particular moment they did not have water there was no wells around there and whatever peop- uh, people water they were carrying it, it they ran out and the time of prayer came and the father abu bakr radiyallahu anhu of aisha radiyallahu anha he was also uh was upset with Aisha radiallahu anha that look what happened because of you our prayers uh, you know we we had to pray without um uh, this uh wudu so because of this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a verse because the people there offered the salah without wudu they did not know about tayammum so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in verse from surah an-nisa this was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam I'm going to recite it in front of you. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajeem. Wa in kuntum marda aw ala safarin aw jaa'a ahadun minkum min al-ghaiti aw aw lamastum an-nisaa fa lam tajidu ma'an فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا فَامْسَحُوا بِوُجُوهِكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَفُوًّا غَفُورًا so The close translation of this verse is And if you are ill or on a journey or one of you comes after answering the call of nature or you have been in contact with women and you find no water and if you find no water perform tayammum with clean earth masah with clean earth and rub therewith your faces and hands truly allah is ever oft pardoning and oft forgiving when people heard this words they were rejoiced and they were thanking aisha radiyallahu anha that Uh, through her so many goodness came so they were very happy about it now the concession of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased now they some of them were talking about aisha radiyallahu anha look where we landed now they were praising aisha radiyallahu anha that how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this concession because of her anyways so when this was revealed people made tayammum and they offered the salah and this basically is a substitution for wudu if someone need to make ghusl they had a wet dream or they had major impurity and they need to take a shower a ghusl of janaba then even if they don't have water they can still make ghusl and they will be in a state of purity and they will be able to offer their salah without any problem one thing to note here is that there are two things only in islam which can purify us one is water and the other is the clean earth these are the only two things and uh, you know um, again we said as we will see with this uh, earth it's it's not really it doesn't really clean anything you know we said for worshiping we need not only physical purification but we need spiritual purification as well and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept it in such a way that through water and through the clean earth our spiritual purification happens in a way we do not understand so and that is the reason why we are able to pray even though you might be having dirt and with the cleaner it's going to look more dirty but 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept it that way. We are made from earth and that's how we our spiritual purification comes from earth. Okay. Next, let's look how actually we do a tayammum. It's the steps of tayammum itself. Now, uh, it's very, uh, there are many steps common between uh, wubu and uh, tayammum. For instance, we, as we said, you need to have intention, it's obligatory. So, you know, you can't be like, oh, you do all the steps of tayammum and then say, well, you know, I was just playing, now I will, since I did it already, let's make it tayammum. No, you got to have intention before you even start, okay? And you should have it in your heart. And uh, as we said before, it's not verbal. It has to be in your heart. You don't have to say anything. And second thing, Bismillah, saying the Basmallah, this is a Sunnah step. Most of the scholars said it. Some said it is necessary, but stronger opinion is, is it is a uh, saying it is a Sunnah. And the third step is that <coughs> you strike on the dust. So you don't touch on the clean earth. You don't touch it, you strike it like this, you strike it, that was the practice of Rasulullah and then once you strike it you wipe your hands okay, you place, the sunnah is that, you place the left palm left palm on your right you wipe it, and then the right palm on the left, you wipe it and then you wipe your face with it so these are the steps that uh, the scholars mentioned from the ahadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Abu Dawud. Now some scholars also mentioned wiping it till the, rest, uh, till the elbows. The, uh, again, there's difference of opinion. I don't want to get into that, but the stronger opinion, according to many scholars, seems to be up to the wrists. So if you just, just strike it on the ground, clean earth, and then left palm on um, the uh, right, and then the right palm on the left, and then wipe it. And actually between these two there is another sunnah that you should do. When you strike it uh, Rasulullah used to dust them off. So basically you blow into that. So whatever dust there is in your hand it, it goes away. So the objective is not that you take the sand and you just rub all over. That's not because again you see here we are not going for physical purification. Okay, it's, it's not meant to like take your dirt away, okay, because this is dirt itself. So that's why Rasulullah as it's uh, proven from Sahih al-Bukhari hadith, that he used to <coughs> dust them off and they, he used to blow into them like this and the dust used to fly. So you strike it and then you dust them off and then left over right and then right over left and then you wipe your face. That's it. That's as simple as that and your poem is done. And then, <coughs> obviously, as with wudu, we also read the dua, same dua that we do after wudu. You can recite, Allahumma jallimna tawabina wa ja'alimna wa ja'alimna wa pupahirina ash la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lahu wa shadu anna muhammadu rasulah. Same dua what we covered last time, okay? We can do the same, same thing. <coughs> and some, some scholars switch the order as well. And some do uh, uh, wipe the face first and wipe the hands second so uh, what I did uh, what I mentioned here is from Sahih al-Bukhari that's what most of the scholars follow and this this is what I prefer uh, what I learned from my shield as well so let's uh, okay this one is clear now let's get into the actual issues of tayammum now we said uh, when you don't have water you should you are clear you have you get the license to do tayammum Right, so is that the only occasion where you can do time where you do not have water? So let's see. <clears throat> there are different occasions that scholars mention that we can take use of the time. What are these? So first one we mentioned obviously if there is no water you can do time. Now what is the other uh, option that you can have? Other occasion is lack of water. <clears throat> what does this mean? This means that you have water, you're traveling, you do have water with you. But you say to yourself that I only have this much water and I need to go to bathroom and use this water or I need to drink this water. And if I use this for these two purposes uh, and if I do wubu with it, I'm not going to have enough to drink, for example. And this is very important. I don't know where I will find water again. So my survival is at risk. So, so for this, scholars said that you have a valid excuse here 
and now you can use it for drinking and also higher priority is for purification cleaning and you go to bathroom or you do uh, istinja that's again you can use this concession for wudu that comes third priority you can make tayammum with it so that's another like scarcity of water lack of water but you have to take a decision really i mean you should know or you can evaluate whether this is sufficient water or not another one risk of losing prayer so what what, what this means is that uh, for example uh, it's like uh, maybe a four o'clock right and you know that you have to pray asr prayer for example you know that you will reach the city in four hours but you're going to miss asr time and you don't have wudu with you so you have to make a decision now i pray right here or i go to the city and pray there but I, it will be a qada right it, it's going to be outside the time so what do i do pray now or go to the city where and i do wudu with water what should i do so the scholar said in this case again you have a valid excuse you can pray with tayammum and then uh, you know, complete it and then go to the city or wherever and then you can find water there's no problem okay <clears throat> and then another is medical issue so some people are sick and they cannot use water if they use water they might die or they might their sickness might increase or they, it might delay their recovery so where do scholars come up with all these opinions so how do they just say it they always look at quran and sunnah a hadith and it is clearly mentioned and this is a very famous hadith actually and it is very very uh, you know something that you should always remember i get scared sometimes whenever i listen to this hadith so what happened is rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was informed of uh, two or three three or more companions they were traveling and um, at the time of prayer came and this one person one sahabi radiyallahu anhu he uh, had injury he had some sort of injury on his body and he was beginning to get sick or he was sick and uh, on that particular night he had a wet dream he became junub major impurity and now when they when he asked the uh, other companions that he had you know i uh, i have to make ghusl i'm in major impurity can i make tayammum they said no you cannot make tayammum you know uh, we have water so you 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 have to make uh, ghusl so he did ghusl and he passed away he died because his injury his sickness was like that and when he came when they came both came and informed this to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he got angry rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said they killed him may allah kill them do you not ask about what you do not know you see here how serious this is so these two sahabi they were very pious worshipers but they did not have knowledge and they gave fatwa without knowledge and what did they do they killed a person it wasn't meant literally by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he showed the seriousness how they how important this issue is and how careful we have to be and this again is a concession valid scenario where you can uh, make tayammum and this just not this one and uh, just not about major impurity it can apply to uh, any uh, any kind of uh, medical reasons for example one of you know you, water might be right there okay just like uh, 10 steps away but you are sitting here medically you are probably handicapped you cannot reach there okay Uh, so in this again you have a concession nobody can help you to bring the water you are by yourself then yes you can make time home again you have an excuse and another thing is uh, <clears throat> extreme difficulty extreme difficulty sometimes things become very very difficult for us and we will not be able to make wudu it will be very very serious to do that uh for example we have a freezing water for instance right and you don't have an uh, ability to heat that water again how do we say that again we have to ask what's the evidence and the scholars give the evidence and they mention the uh, hadith wherein uh, the sahabi radiyallahu anhu his name was umar ibn al-as and he was traveling with other sahaba and he also had a wet dream and uh what did he do he uh prayed with the sahaba radiyallahu anhu 
and uh, he led the Salah, right? And he, when they came back, the companions uh, complained to Rasulullah He led the prayer and he had major impurity. And we had water and he was not even sick. And he did tamum and he led the prayer. So Rasulullah asked Amr ibn Nawaz, why did you do that? You know, paraphrasing it, why did you do, why did you lead the prayer? Why did you not make ghusl when water was available? And uh, Amr ibn al-As anhu, he mentioned Rasulullah It was a very cold night and basically he mentioned a verse from Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Do not kill yourselves and Allah is merciful to you. So when Rasulullah saw this, he smiled. He smiled. He smiled basically because he approved how Amr ibn al-As, you know, he had this ishtihad, he has the ability to do that and he figured out because the uh, temperature there was very, very, you know, as you know, and in, in sometimes in uh, uh, Arabian Peninsula, when it comes, when winter comes, it becomes very cold. Might not be freezing, but it's so cold that, it, you know, if you use that water for making ghusl, you, there's a good chance you'll get sick. So even though you don't have injury, scholars said that if it is like that, that freezing or that, that cold, then you can do tamu. And sometimes it does happen even in this country. Uh, uh, most of you have witnessed the sandy, right? Uh, all praise be to Allah, it didn't happen during winter season. Alhamdulillah. Uh, it, and many people did report it actually many years ago in this country when it snows. And sometimes when it snows, what happens? The, uh, the water tap, water doesn't come from the tap because the water can get frozen in. And then, you know, there's no gas and electricity goes away. What do you do? The only thing you have available is snow outside. You don't have any water, you used all water. So what do you do in this circumstance? You go out and do you, do you take ice and you make wudu with it? Now this is again, it qualifies for extreme difficulty situation as the scholars mentioned. And in this case, scholars said it is permissible for you to take the license at concession of tayammum. <clears throat> and the uh, last one is the scholars mentioned threat. When there is a threat, you can do, you can make tayammum. So what kind of threat we are talking about? There can be any threat to the life, any, any threat. For example, uh, uh, in modern world, this, uh, in our, our uh, time, uh, we can say, uh, for example, if you are traveling in a plane, right? And, and it, it really happened one time that um, our scholars were mentioning that people uh, were making wudu in plane, and the plane was obviously full of Muslims and uh, they were making wudu and they were not making uh, wiping over their socks or their hoof and water was coming out of the bathroom and you know everybody making wudu what's going to happen you know little by little water was coming out and it was in the uh, aisle of the airplane and it was a major security hazard and, and the pilots and the air hostess were insisting that please it's a danger for the aeroplane you can't do it please do it so people didn't have this knowledge many people were like no we have water we have to make wudu i don't believe in wiping over the socks this and that and they, they did it and then that's what happened so the scholars mentioned again that it, it's a threat you know if because of that if a plane would have you know um, come in danger and if the train would train would have collapsed then that person would have been responsible for causing all this life loss for example so again uh, when you have such kind of threats when you know it's a threat to the life then it is permissible to make them okay <clears throat> so what exactly do we mean by them uh, what, what objects we can use for them is the clean earth only one do we have to go out and find the clean earth or can we do uh, other with other objects as well so the scholars said again that the dust is like the most preferred of all objects. You find cleaner, that's like the best thing, that's what you should go for. But if you don't have it, you can use other objects as well. Uh, for example, you, you have like a, a mud, rocks, sand, clay, pebbles or anything like that. Or if you only have a little bit of stone, what they said, the scholar said, you just take that stone and you roll over your hands like you have soap, you know you just roll over it and then you, your hands will have dust and then you can do the steps of tayammum okay so that will work and Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen he said that if any object has dust particles on it then it can be used for tayammum even if um, 
uh, yeah, it's not clean earth, but any object that has dust on it, like plastered walls, for example, even that is fine. And Imam uh, Abu Hanifa, even he said that smooth, smooth rock surfaces, rock surfaces and plastered walls and clay from pure mud, all these are valid. So this is okay. But again, the best thing to do is go out, find clean earth and do it from the thermom. And if you are in plain, do you find um, clean earth? You don't find. So what do you do? Whatever dust is on the surface, you just go and do tamum with it. Okay, now it's a situation of necessity. Chairs of the aeroplane or whatever, the front of the aeroplane, you can do it. <clears throat> uh, one question though. What if somebody is in a hospital, he uh, had an accident for example, and his two hands, two legs, you know that happens, right? they, they put all the plasters and everything, he can't even do tamum, and there's nobody to help him to do tamum as well, or wobo. So what should that person do? He can't even do tayammum. He, he still has to pray, right? He still has to pray and uh, he has to pray by maybe eyes or whatever he can. He has to still pray. So how does he uh, make wubu? How does he make tayammum? You know, he, you can't do anything. You can just probably show a little bit of actions as if you're doing tayammum or, you know, you can just pray like that. Many things, many times it happens like that. Even like the prisoners, for example, they tie them up like this or, you know, chain them up. And they have to pray. They are Muslims. No matter how bad they are, they are Muslims. And they are concerned about praying. What do they do? They just do whatever they can. They can do taimun. That's okay. They still have to pray. Because it's a situation of necessity. No exceptions for prayers. No valid excuse. You still have to pray, brother. That's why it's such a serious thing. You have to pray no matter what. You can't say, oh, it's a good opportunity. I can't make taimun. I can't make wubu. So, alhamdulillah, I don't have to pray. That is not a valid excuse. <clears throat> okay, now, partial tamum. Um, this is something, for example, your whole body is fine, you make wubu, but you got probably you fell down from the stairs, you had plaster on your hands you can't make wobo over this part or you cannot bend or whatever you cannot make full wobo so this partial tamum is that some body parts you can make tamum so uh, wiping over it basically uh, you wipe over your arms uh, that's that's fine or you wipe over your uh, foot that is again that's fine and you can use uh, uh, wiping for any of such parts okay so this is called partial tamum and okay the question here that many people ask is there are like few brothers traveling right and uh, people had wubu one brother didn't have wubu and they didn't have water so did, he did tamu now you have brothers who all have wubu but some of them did real wubu some of them did uh, tayammum uh, can a person who did tayammum lead the prayer of the other for, for others is he uh, qualified to be an imam so the scholar said that yes, if he is qualified, if the conditions of imamate, you know, like if he knows the Quran very well, he's hafid al Quran, he's very knowledgeable, then we, then he has to lead the prayers. Okay, so you, so once he has tamum, he becomes equal. You know, he becomes spirit, he's spiritually purified. So you don't differentiate now. So he is very similar to others, and he can do all the things that a person with tahara can do. He can read Quran with the tamum. He can do uh, even tawaf with the tayammum. He can do every other thing. There's nothing that he cannot do. He becomes exactly equal. <clears throat> now, uh, how does tayammum break? So we mentioned all the examples. What breaks your wudu, right? Anything comes out of private parts. All those five things we mentioned. Tayammum, exactly those things break. Exactly same. What breaks wudu also breaks your tayammum. But there is one additional thing that breaks your tamum. Okay, what is that additional thing? You find water. When you find water, your tamum breaks. So you just did tamum, and then you are about to start prayer, and the brother came running and said, "Brother, I found water for you. Do wudu." So now we can't say, "Oh, I did tamum, so I'm okay." No. Once you find water, your wudu, your tamum automatically breaks. You, so you have to make wudu, and then you can pray. Now, the same scenario, brother makes tayammum and 
he offers his salah. As soon as he says salam, the brother comes running and said, Brother, I found water. Make wudu. Does he have to repeat his prayer? He doesn't have to repeat his prayer. He does not have to repeat his prayer because that was done and he had the license concession to do it and that is fine. He doesn't have to rep uh, do it again. Okay. <clears throat> and again, can you use the same tayammum for multiple prayers or do you have to keep repeating tayammum for every prayer? So one, as with wudu, you can do it for multiple prayers as well. No problem, inshallah. So again, you have to think, brothers and sisters here, you know, like just don't jump to tayammum. You know, I can't, I'm, I'm sick, I, I want to do tayammum. No. There are many steps before you go to tayammum. First, you try your best to make wudu. If you cannot make wudu, ask someone to help you do wudu. Okay? Ask someone. Someone, you know, if you cannot walk, ask someone, you know, can you please bring water or help me make wudu? So you can, you have to ask that. And third thing, you, you can do tayammum if that is not possible. And then fourth thing, if you yourself cannot do tayammum, you ask others, please help me do tayammum. I can't even move my hands. Or even that is not possible, then you go to the fifth option wherein you just pray as it is. So don't jump to fourth or fifth immediately. Exhaust all the possible uh, uh, options that you have of making wudu.